Good morning. It's really good to see you. As Christmas is coming, can you see I've got the Christmas jumper on? It's a reindeer one. I've got some Christmas cards going on. I've even got some decorations. I wonder if you've decorated your house. You can put your hand up if you have. Christmas is a great time, isn't it, for making predictions? I wonder how often we do that with the gifts that we have. You know, we get them around the tree, don't we? We see a box, we see a big present, and we think, what's in there? And we start to make predictions. I wonder if you can guess what's in this. Let me tell you a bit about it, because we like to weigh it, don't we? It doesn't weigh very much. It's quite soft. It doesn't shake. I don't think it's a hamster. What do you think is that, that's in this gift? Well, let's find out. Let's see if you got it right. Oh, it's quite fun, isn't it? Opening presents. Socks! Christmas Peppa Pig socks. Brilliant. I need another pair of socks. We make predictions all the time, don't we, at Christmas? Now, a prediction is guessing what's going to happen. It's like forecasting the weather, having a look out the window, thinking, I think at eight o'clock tonight, the weather is going to be like... It's a forecast, a prediction, a guess. Now, I want to tell you something pretty awesome. Before Jesus was born, God didn't just predict. He promised what would happen. Hundreds of years before, God promised what would happen. Listen to what Matthew says. And Matthew says this all the way through the opening chapters of his book. He wants us to see that Jesus was not a surprise for God. It was part of God's big plan. God's big plan to save the world. And those plans were told hundreds of years before. Listen to this. The mother of Jesus Christ was Mary. And this is how the birth of Jesus came about. Mary was engaged to marry Joseph. But before they married, she learned that she was going to have a baby. She was pregnant by the power of the Holy Spirit Mary's husband, Joseph, was a good man. He did not want to disgrace her in public, so he planned to divorce her secretly. While Joseph thought about this, an angel of the Lord came to him in a dream. And the angel said, Joseph, descendant of David, don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife. The baby in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son. You will name the son Jesus. Give him that name because he will save his people from their sins. All this happened, Matthew writes, to make clear the full meaning of what the Lord had said through the prophet Isaiah. The virgin will be pregnant, she will have a son, and they will name him Emmanuel. This name means God is with us. The prophet Isaiah years ago had spoken God's promises to his people. And we have them written down in the Bible in the Old Testament. And there's lots of them, not just in Isaiah, but in different pro prophets as well. And the amazing thing is, it's like God giving us a message, a Christmas message, hundreds of years before Christmas even happened. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm not very good at sending Christmas messages. I'm not very good at sending Christmas cards. But let me just go and grab one. Here is a pretty classic Christmas card, isn't it? Merry Christmas. Lovely. God sent his messages. He sent his promises before that very first Christmas. And in that message, in that message, we read all the way back in Isaiah, uh, about 700 years before Jesus was born, we read these words. Let me find it in Isaiah chapter 7. Verse 14. But the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will be pregnant. She will have a son and she will name him Emmanuel. How amazing is that? Matthew is saying that these words are completed. They're fulfilled. They're kept by God. This promise that one day. God would send his rescuer, his saviour king, have been kept by Jesus. God creates an expectation all the way through the Old Testament. 
that one day his king would come to save the whole world by rescuing his people from their sin and he would rule forever. How does God create this expectation? Well, he sends many messages. I'll get all of these cards off to show us, really, to illustrate that God sent lots of messages. In Matthew's Gospel, we don't have time, but in the first two chapters, we read more messages. In Matthew 2, verse 6, we find out that that was promised, that Jesus, this ruling king, would be born in Bethlehem. We find out in chapter 2, verse 15, that this child would have to escape to Egypt and be called back out of Egypt because of the plans of evil King Herod. We find out the result of those plans were written before, before they even happened in the prophet Jeremiah, 586-ish years before Jesus was born. God keeps giving his messages all the way through the Old Testament that point forward to Jesus. Matthew wants us to see that God keeps his promises. I wonder how you are at keeping promises. I know that I've made promises before that I haven't kept. Let me give you an example. Mum, I promise I'll clean my room. But I, I didn't. Or I'll promise I'll be nice to my sister. But I wasn't. Or I promise it wasn't me. But it was. We make promises all the time, don't we? Some of those we keep, some of those we don't keep. Maybe you've been, been on this sort of experience of a broken promise. Maybe someone has promised to invite you round to their birthday, but you never got an invitation. Maybe someone promises that school will get better, but it doesn't really feel like it's happening. Maybe someone's even promised you that you can go to lunch at McDonald's but they forgot and it never happened. We see in the Bible that God makes promises all the way through the Old Testament, hundreds of years before that point forward to his son, Jesus. And the amazing thing is he keeps his promises. And we see that in the birth of Jesus as he's born, where he's born, who he's born to, the Virgin Mary, the town that he's born in Bethlehem, that he's a boy, that he is God with us, Emmanuel. It's amazing. As we start to read through Matthew, we see God keeping his promises. And what does this mean for us? Well, it means some really cool things. I think the big thing I want to encourage you with is that it gives us confidence that we can be sure that when God makes a promise, he keeps it. God's promises are amazing. We've seen that. Jesus would be born to a virgin in Bethlehem. He would have to flee to Egypt to escape Herod's evil plans. As we get older, others will say that they are not sure if the Bible is true or if Jesus really is who he says he is. And maybe you've even had doubts yourself. But this should give us great confidence in God, whose plan it was from right at the beginning to send his son Jesus to save the world from their sin. And we can be certain and sure of that because Jesus rose from the dead after he died on the cross to take the punishment in our place for our sin. He died on the cross, but three days later he rose again. We can be confident in God. We can be confident in his promises. We can be sure that God keeps his promises and we see that by sending his promise keeping king, his son, Jesus. We're going to have a think about that now.